Hello, and welcome to this episode of In the Garage. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I was able to hack my Dodge Challenger RT. So to hack the Dodge Challenger RT, we're going to need a few things. And the most important thing we're going to need is knowledge. There's no better way to get knowledge than to RTFM, right? So I got this book a while ago on eBay. It was about 40 bucks, kind of expensive, but it's the Car Hacker's Handbook. And it's written by Craig Smith. This book is really well written. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I learned a lot about my car with this book. Not only about hacking the car and pen testing the car, but just about the car in general. It's, I know it says it's a guide for the penetration tester, but honestly, the author goes into threat modeling and attack surfaces and how to actually attack the car. And I'm only this far into the book and I've already done cool stuff with my car. Anyone can pick up this book and read this book as long as you have these extra pieces that I'm going to show you. So the next thing we're going to need is a USB 2 CAN device. This is the Corlan USB to CAN device. I'll drop a link in the description downstairs for you to click on. And it was about $60, and it took, 60 or 70, and it took about a week and a half or two weeks to get here from the United Kingdom. I'm in the United States, by the way. And what this device does, it allows you to interface with the CAN bus with like a Linux computer, basically. One side has a typical USB-A, connector. The other side has the OBD2 connector. You basically treat it as if it were a network card, like a, a NIC in a Linux computer. You would use ifconfig to view the NIC. You would use the IP commands to uh, set the baud rate and turn it up. And so the next piece we're going to need is a Linux computer. I used a basic Lenovo laptop that had Windows on it and I installed Daemon Linux in a virtualized machine. You could get Daemon Linux from daemonlinux.com. It's free. And you download it, install it, and you run it in, say, VMware Pro, which you could get from eBay for like five bucks. And then inside VMware, you basically associate the USB device as a removable device to the operating system. It seriously takes three or four clicks. It's very easy to do. And once done, then you open up the terminal, as you'll see later, and then we'll start managing the device and doing things like sniffing the packets on the CAN bus and sending packets on the CAN bus, packet injection, technically. So the very last piece that I used in hacking the Dodge Challenger RT is the Z Automotive Double Bypass. And the reason why I use this is because I believe that Fiat or Chrysler or whomever created the car decided to put a security feature in their DLC, their diagnostic link connector, which is below the steering wheel, where you would normally plug in things into your OBD2 connector. They probably put the safety measure or security measure there just simply so that people weren't plugging anything into it, which could potentially damage the electronical components, the ECUs, or void the warranty. And that's, you know, that's a good thing, but the CAN bus probably exists everywhere. And without actually, paying the $100 fee to Fiat to actually get the wiring diagram for this particular car. I just decided that, hey, I already have that in the trunk, might as well tap into it. You could probably find these lines all over the place in the car and connectors for it. You could, I think you could find them behind the glove box, under the seats, and in various areas. Okay, so the very last thing I wanna talk about is how do we actually hack the Dodge Challenger, right? Once we get all of our stuff set up, we have our computer that's running Linux, we have our CAN to USB device plugged in and associated with that virtual machine in Daemon Linux, we have it hooked into the double bypass system in the trunk. I want to press the lock button and wait until there's no traffic on the CAN bus. I want to put the car into a state in which it would look like if it were found in a parking lot or in a garage and it was sitting there for hours or overnight. Nothing is happening whatsoever. Then what I want to do is actually start sniffing traffic on the CAN bus. Again, it should be silent. Nothing should be happening. What I'm going to do next is simply press the unlock button on the key fob, which is gonna fire off a ton of traffic on the CAN bus and unlock the car. I'm gonna capture all of that traffic. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the capture and keep the log file. Then what I'm going to do is hit the lock button and then wait until there's absolutely nothing going on on the car. Put the car exactly back into the same exact state it was before as though someone found it in a parking lot and it was sitting there for hours or overnight or in a garage, you know? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replay those packets directly into the CAN bus. I'm just going to make a bash one-liner that goes through that entire file using awk pull out all of the signals that were sent on the bus and just resend them and see if it unlocks the car. So basically it's a packet replay attack or a in packet injection attack and we're physically tapped into the actual CAN bus of the car itself. If this works, 
then I will technically know how to unlock my car and open my car without actually having the key fob. Here are my keys, right? I'm not going to hit it now because it's going to make all kinds of noise on the bus. So what I'm going to do now is I have the can to USB plugged in via USB and it's now in my virtual machine. I'm going to do, let's see, I have config, can zero, boom, there's a the device. And if we go down here, I'm just going to do D message. That's the kernel messaging system. We can see that, uh, that the device shows up and the firmware is loaded for it. It's working properly. I can see the lights are on. So what I'm going to do now is can dump and zero. Okay, we don't see anything, right? All right, so I'm going to trigger something on the car. I'm going to hit unlock. See all those messages? We now have to wait for these to go away. I'm gonna lock the car, and I'm gonna wait for the bus to clear. And I'm going to redo the same exact thing, but this time I'm going to capture the packets to a log file. Okay, so we've slowed down now. The bus looks like it's clean. It's not doing anything at all. I'm going to stop this. Clear. CD into can hacking. There's no files in here. I'm going to do can dump. L. Can zero. Now I'm going to do this can't see the output because it's dumping it to a file, but you can check the file size. So let's go into ham hacking, ls-lah, 572k, do it again, 848k, so it's still running, it's still capturing packets. Alright, so it looks to be about done. It's 1.3 megabytes in size, so what I'm going to do is hit control c and we're going to stop this. So now if I do ls, we'll see that there's a file. If I check out that file, we can see that it has timestamps, it has the device, and then it has the ECU ID, pound symbol, and then the message that was sent to the ECU, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to replay all of those. So to do so, I'm going to do awk, print, I believe that was the third column, file, boom. Okay, so all we need are these. And I'm going to pass this into XRs, I, this, and we're going to do can send the device name, can zero, and this. RM typing on a laptop keyboard, the worst on the planet from Lenovo. So great. So this command right here should do the same exact thing as me pressing this button, right? Here we go. The keys, actually I'm going to leave the keys here in sight so you can see I have no other key. Here we go. I got in.